news today is that we've launched this Parkinson's Voice Initiative and it's been, it's exceeded all expectations really in terms of the response. Just through the US and the UK, which is mainly the, the main audience obviously for English language um, speaking news broadcasts, um, we've already managed to reach close to the 1,000 call target in about 16 hours which is, given that we were planning the project to actually run for six months, is, you know, fantastic. So why are we collecting the data? Well, you need to be able to screen out the difference, you need to be able to separate out the difference between people who have Parkinson's disease and those who don't. As part of that, what you'll find is that when you collect data in a new kind of setting, there are all sorts of confounding factors that occur that you can't necessarily anticipate. So you need to randomize. You need to go out into the population and collect random samples from a large number of people. And in doing so, what you find is that these confounding effects, like for example, somebody may be a heavy smoker, and that might look like Parkinson's disease to the algorithms. And so you need to be able to iron out those effects, and this is what randomization does. But to do that, to get the right level of statistical power, you need to collect a lot of data in order to do that. That, that question about how long it will take to, to get a... To get a a working system that patients can use depends a lot on the on the circumstances. In a way, what we've proven is we've proven the, the technology. So we've shown that the core difficult part, essentially the difficult part of it, or the bit that requires the new science, has been done. And now we're really trying out this science in different contexts. The goal next, of course, is an implementation question. And of course, a lot of that depends on, for example, whether we're going to be using it in a in a neurologist's surgery, for example, or whether it's going to be used you know, by a patient at home, in which case it might be on a smartphone, or it might be something that is on a website that people can, can use, in which case that's more of a consumer application, for example. So there are lots of different impl possible implementations, all of which are based around the same technology. And the question, of course, is just, you know, which, which sort of application are we talking about? So that... that with these things, of course, it just depends on resources to a, to a large extent.